Yeah, as you can see from my Windows 7 uh, box on the right, uh, this first connection I have set up for local area connection 2, I'm getting the Microsoft 169.254 address, which basically means that it was unable to contact a DHCP server and grab an address. I do have a public interface configured on that one, but let's go ahead and uh, configure DHCP on our SLES 10 box and uh, get an address to show up here. So the first thing that I want to do is launch YAST to Actually, the first thing I want to do is I want to double check my time. If my time is out of sync, I could have a problem. It is currently, my, my Windows box is right about 1.30. So let's, and our, our clock right here is wrong on our server. I did set up NTP on this box. I think I just need to restart it because I did revert a snapshot. And our time is now correct. So as long as your time is correct, um, let's go ahead and launch yas2dhcp-server. And the very first screen, you're going to be in the basic wizard the first time you come in this. Um, subsequently, you'll come into the expert wizard. Uh, I'm going to select the bonded interface that I want to listen on for my DHCP server, which will be my private network. I'll put in, fill in this information. Primary name server's IP address, that's my 10.10.10.171, which is a SLES 11 box. The secondary name server is this one. Let's put in a gateway. And these are not, uh, these, this information is put into the global section of your DHCP configuration, so you can add and subtract from this as you wish. Now, um, what it wants to do is, the very first thing that we need to do is we need to configure a subnet for the interface for which we are bound. You don't necessarily have to hand out addresses for it, but it will configure an interface for it. In my case, I am going to be handing out addresses, so we'll put in 10.10.10.70 as my first address, 10.10.10.80 as my last address, so I'm only having a pool of 10, server, 10 addresses. The default lease time is fine for what I'm doing. So I'm going to click next and I'm going to allow it when booting. Now I'm going to go in this expert configuration. It'll be the same screens as before as you can see here uh, ex except you get host management. You can come add hosts in manually if you'd like or you can come into expert settings and it warns you saying once you go into expert settings you can't come back to the screen. Do you want to continue? I say yes. Now in expert settings, um, if I were to edit the global options, you'll notice that some of those settings that I put in, the domain, domain name, the DNS servers, the routers, uh, or the default gateway are all in here. I can add my other information in here too if I'd like, but um, this scope, if, if I come and add in multiple uh, subnets, I don't want them to all get this information, so I'd end up removing them. I do want to add this server as authoritative though. By default, servers are not added as authoritative in case somebody brings up a rogue DHCP server and then it starts sending out NACs to everybody and denying them. Um, so we were, this is going to be a legitimate DHCP server, so we'll throw in the authoritative statement. Now we'll come and edit our subnet, highlight it, edit it. Dynamic DNS will be covered in another tutorial. Um, Here's some basic information, our network address, our net mask. You can come in and add options. So we'll come down in the option sections and we'll call it the, the, the domain name. Say OK. I'm going to add a couple of more options. Uh, actually, we'll just add in one more. I've got the domain name servers, but those are coming from the other section because I haven't removed them. And then we'll go ahead and add option routers, which is our default gateway, which is also in the other section. In fact, I should probably just go and remove them from there. Let me add my servers, domain name servers. I'll say OK to this. I'm going to edit the global section. I'm going to remove the domain. Those basically the options I configured down in the subnet right there. I'm going to remove them from here. Click Finish. Now DHCP should be running and loading. If we tell F our var log messages, let me expand the screen. 
hit enter a few times. Notice I'm going to do a release and renew. Actually, I don't need to do a release. I'll just do a renew. Maybe I should do a release. Vconfig release. Here's our request coming in on the left hand side, our discover. We offer them an address. Still waiting on it. Some of the sluggishness is just due to the resources uh, being spread out on these ESXi boxes. So anyway, so we have an offer, a request. He acts that. Um, let's type an IP config and we should see. Well, the Windows box is running a little slow right now, so we'll give it a second. Okay, so we typed IP config. Notice we got our address, the 10, 10, 10, 80. Um, I'm going to also type IP config slash all. And again, sorry that's running slow, but now if we go ahead and scroll up, you'll notice that our DNS servers that we configured underneath that subnet are located here. And I believe I forgot to add the domain name, but that's okay. You go add the option, release, and renew, you'll get that information. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. I hope it helps you out. Thanks.